So in this video we're gonna take a look at the world's smallest macro setup. Almost, at least. <laughs> uh, I came up with the idea because I already happen to own both the camera and the lens. The camera is the Panasonic GM1, which I made a separate video about earlier. Uh, arguably the world's smallest interchangeable lens camera uh, on the market today. And the lens is the Olympus 60mm f2.8 macro, which is uh, regarded by many as the best macro lens for the Micro Four Thirds system. And as you can see here, the camera even has an integrated flash. So in theory, we have everything we need for a great macro setup. And this is something I've always wanted, a really small and even pocketable macro setup. It may not fit in your jeans pocket, but if you have other types of pants, it is actually pocketable. <laughs> and it is a lot smaller than any other macro setup I've worked with. A great thing with a macro lens like this is that you can have it as a pretty good portrait lens as well. And it delivers quite beautiful results, even though you cannot really get the most stunning bokeh ever, since the sensor is quite small and since the lens isn't the fastest, as it is a macro lens. So I decided to bring this setup on my recent trip to France because I have very limited space in my luggage and I still wanted to do some macro photography. Uh, so I took it with me in my bag and decided to use it for a few days in France uh, to do some macro photography and to see if it really holds up as a good macro setup. So let's see what results I came up with. In general, Micro Four Thirds as a system should lend itself pretty well to macro photography. Since it has a small sensor, you get uh, deeper depth of field, which is something that is quite scarce in macro photography. You want to have as deep depth of field as possible when you focus in close, uh, because it will just be like less than one millimeter in many cases if you focus really closely. So. A smaller sensor should help a little bit with that, to get a little bit de deeper depth of field. I began by shooting some uh, flowers uh, and other plants and stuff uh, up close. This is something I really like doing when I cannot find uh, insects or other small creatures to photograph. So for this particular use case, where you don't go to one-to-one -one magnification, but focus on a medium distance and you don't use a flash, this setup is really great, I would say. If you don't require super high resolution, the camera is only 16 megapixels, this is a really great setup for this kind of usage. The only thing that bothered me was the lack of a viewfinder. I completely get that uh, you cannot have a viewfinder if you want the camera to be this compact, but it still bothered me and it makes composition a lot harder when you don't have a viewfinder and you're out in sunlight. So the next step for me was to try this setup on some insects. Uh, I found these ants uh, on the terrace. And I tried it first without the flash, just in uh, the sunlight, in the evening sun. And I had to use quite a high shutter speed, because the ants were so quick. And unfortunately, I don't really like how the pictures turned out. Uh, when you're doing macro photography in general in harsh sunlight like this, usually you kind of don't get the kind of deep colors that you want. Uh, it's always preferable with a flash, I would say, in macro photography. It's hard to get it right at high magnifications in sunlight. So I uh, picked up my favorite soft diffuser and I used the built-in flash on the camera uh, just to see uh, what kind of results I would get. So ants aren't really my favorite subject when it comes to macro photography. They are far too quick and it is really hard to uh, catch them standing still. Um, but uh, the ants were what I had this evening to try my setup on. <laughs> so I had to do with that. Uh, unfortunately, the biggest problem uh, with this setup is that the flash is far too small and not strong enough 
and the maximum flash sync speed is one fiftieth of a second with this camera, uh, which makes for really blurry images. In general, you can take nice looking macro photos with a slow shutter speed. I've shown that in other videos, but it requires that you have a really fast flash so that the flash can stand for the majority of the light in the photo. Since this flash was too weak, uh, you just get this kind of motion blur uh, and the pictures don't come out that good, unfortunately. I think another potential problem is also since the flash is so small in size, uh, it doesn't give the diffuser doesn't uh, get a chance to do its job because the flash is very small and close to the subject and um, uh, the size of the light source becomes too small and then you get this kind of industrial lighting looking light <laughs> um, and yeah it does it just doesn't really look that good. If you want a super small macro setup and you want to try something similar to this I would recommend using the same lens, the Olympus 60mm, but uh, with a slightly larger camera. Uh, maybe the Panasonic G85 or something like that. Uh, then you can also attach uh, a larger flash, an external flash, um, which is not possible on the GM1. And probably you could get a lot better results. So, to summarize. This setup is great for all the stuff that does not require a flash. Then I think it gives excellent results. And yeah, it is really, really small and pocketable. And um, other than that, if you need to use a flash, you should get a more serious camera where you can have an external flash. That way you can also use it for uh, high magnification macro photography and all other kinds of macro photography that requires a flash. That's it for this video, please leave a like if you did like it and please subscribe for more, I try to post every week. Thank you so much for watching and see you very soon again.